It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your feel good breakfast show, Expresso on S3. Now, if you heard in the eight o'clock news, we were talking about this next topic. Statistics estimated that three times as many tigers are in captivity than they are in the wild. And tigers are not na native to Africa, which means that this endangered species is often subjected to illegal exporting and trading and medicinal use. Now, last week, eight-year-old tigress Sheba, all the way in Gauteng, escaped from an enclosure in a private home in Walkerville. And joining us to chat more about this incident and what later unfolded is director of Four Paws SA, Fiona Miles. Good morning, Fiona. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Chris, you have you with us uh, chatting about this, Shiba, and I think, uh, I mean, uh, Fiona, the first thing that uh, I think a lot of people were, uh, were asking themselves with regards to Shiba is, uh, how did this person, uh, I'm not sure who their name is, even come to acquiring a tiger, which is an exotic animal in a South African <coughs> context because they're not native to South Africa, acquiring ownership mm. of a tiger? In South Africa, it's not too difficult to own a tiger because it's a non-native species. The, the permitting regulations are... Um, less than it, it would be for other animals. So um, one does need a permit, mm. um, but one applies and can acquire a tiger, but, you know, from a sale. The, if you go online, there's many, many animals that you can actually purchase online. If I read the story correctly, the, the gentleman actually had them from his, his mother and he was sort of looking after them. Um, apparently they were being kept behind, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, electric fencing and so on, which is also a requirement. Um, but it seems like there was some sabotage and those fences were cut and of course eventually an animal would escape. And I think this is the whole idea behind us talking today is to, to just sort of demonstrate how dangerous it is to own an exotic wild animal. Mm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Can you tell us more about the work that Four Paws do? Because <coughs> I know that you also not too long ago captured 10 lions that were held in inappropriate captivity. Um, w what is the role that, that Four Paws does? So we're an international animal welfare organization. Um, we work very hard to reveal suffering of animals, um, to rescue those that can be rescued and keep them protected in our sanctuaries. Mm -hmm. um, more than that, uh, I think a lot of work needs to go into campaigning and raising awareness and actually elevating the, the plight of these animals. And so in the case of the 10 lions, um, they were being kept in inappropriate conditions. They were kept illegally without permit. Mm. And we were asked by the authorities to, to bring them um, and give them a safe forever home at our Big Cat Sanctuary Alliance Rock in the Free State. Yeah. Now, Sheba was an adult tiger. So one could be maybe fooled into thinking that over time, an animal like a tiger could be domesticated and it could be found to, you know, kind of be friendly to human beings. Is that even possible when it comes to wild animals? No, because they are wild. They have an instinct and a wild instinct. So the best you can do is to habituate them and train them, for want of a better word, right. within new circumstances and within a confined space. And so, so even if you were to have them, let's say, from as little as a cub and you were to hand raise them and, you know, get them used to the environment, the instinct still remains. Absol absolutely. And I think once that animal is exposed to a large area, does not have the confines anymore and does not have that routine, the, their natural instincts will kick in. Sure. Mm. How does one go about containing the danger of, you know, like the incident that played out where the tiger escaped an enclosed area in a, uh, you know, like Johannesburg is a big area. Mm. How do you protect livestock and, and human life and, and all the elements that can come with that? Is it even possible? I don't think so, not without completely saying no to these exotic animals as pets in backyards. You're not going to be able to prevent these incidents going forward. And I think that's really an important and strong message to send to the authorities and send to people. Owning such an animal is such a huge responsibility. And keeping it confined is against its own natural behavior. And um, yeah, I think the biggest appeal we can make is, is that we should not be keeping wild animals as pets. Yeah. Mm. And then, as was widely reported, that um, eventually Sheba was euthanized, uh, given the permission by the owner. But, I mean, that's quite a significant decision to make. What does that say? I think it must have been a very hard decision to make. I think anybody who has that responsibility 
can't, can't feel well about it. And um, it just shows that at the end of the day, that animal should have actually been rescued, should have gone to a sanctuary, should have gone to a place of safety, mm -hmm. and to have shot it and taken her life away as a consequence mm -hmm. from our behavior as human beings is really, really frightful. So again, it just goes back to the point of not having these animals as pets and in private keeping. Yeah. yeah. Well, stay tuned. Yeah, we'll be continuing our discussion with Fiona shortly regarding this news that we've been reporting on. And, of course, uh, the opportunity is always there for you to weigh in on your opinion. Do send us your voice notes to 063-408-8863. It's my feel-good birthday show. Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3 on this Monday morning. Now, South Africa is playing quite a significant role in contributing to the decline of tigers. In fact, South Africa finds itself as one of the biggest importers of tigers, causing the illegal tiger trade to flourish while threatening wild populations. Certainly something that we cannot be proud of. We're back again with Fiona Miles, Director of Four Poor South Africa. And we'd like now to discuss a bit more around the laws and the regulations in South Africa with regards to owning uh, an exotic or endangered species, something that I think uh, all of us as a public need to know about. And Fiona, I think I'm a little shocked at how easy it is for people to be able to hold these big cats in captivity. What are the current laws that can protect these exotic animals? So South Africa has the National Environmental Management Biodiversity Act, and underneath that the Threatened or Protected Species Regulations, which then allow the permitting of um, and restriction of activities with these, these animals. So in principle, South Africa is not allowed to export um, big cat, uh, uh, specifically tigers for the purpose of um, commercial purposes. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, uh, many different uh, excuses are given to send these animals out, so zoos or for other purposes. And um, we actually are commercially trading with these animals. Wow. And we're wow. not supposed to. And we're not supposed to. So, you know, other than the work that you do at Four Paws, which I would only assume contributes positively towards conservation and further creation of awareness, are there any other bodies within the, countries, the country that, that are mandated with keeping accurate statistics and locations and all those that, that relevant information that we need to know about the locations of these animals and who's keeping them? Are they qualified to keep them? Are there bodies that are mandated with that? The Department for Environment, Forestries and Fisheries is uh, supposed to keep records and people are supposed to actually record the animals with them mm. um, because they issue the, the, the permits. Uh, we did some prior requests, uh, um, access to information requests, and only three out of nine provinces responded sure. um, to, to the information mm. um, or to the request for information. Um, but as far as we understand, in the period from 20, 2011 till 2020, unfortunately, 452 uh, tigers were exported from South Africa. In that same period, 27 and a half thousand lions were the same. So we've got a we're a big exporter and the biggest exporter of big cats from this country. And obviously, this is creating. I mean, there's a huge demand, and we need to also stop the demand for these these animals because obviously they're going to uh, Southeast Asia, to countries like Thailand, Vietnam, um, and they are being used to in traditional Chinese medicine and so on. Um, mm. So we need to create a lot of awareness about the fact that the, there shouldn't be this demand for these animals. Um, in South Africa, definitely, who's wanting to raise its conservation uh, status and repair the reputation damage that has already been created by allowing this industry to perpetuate, um, we need to put a stop to it. I'm uh, sorry, I'm, I'm interested to ask, because you touched on the fact that, you know, these animals are used in, let's say, traditional medicines in some regions of the world. How does one begin to tackle that? Because you, you're working, you're fighting, let's say, someone's and a, a nation's beliefs and cultures in that regard. And on the one hand, there's conservation, which is to be regarded because we don't want to end up in a future where these animals don't exist at all purely because they were serving... Um, you know, a belief that, that is not supported by everyone. So it's quite a sensitive issue. How does one begin to tackle that? I think, firstly, um, knowledge is a very important thing. And I think if we can tackle it from our side by implementing a stronger legislation or at least implementing the legislation that we have, obviously, compliance is a very difficult thing to monitor because there are more than or nearly 400 breeding farms in South Africa. That's really difficult for the government to, to be able to monitor and manage. And that's why it's needed to restrict it from our end and raise awareness. And I think that um, generationally, 
um, in those countries, they've already outlawed and, and, and put aside and banned certain practices mm. um, by themselves. So why are we continuing to, to, to feed into yeah. it? Mm. How can we, as the public, you know, step in and help and call for, uh, how can we protect these exotic animals? I think firstly and foremostly by not visiting any facility that actually uh, is displaying them, okay. allowing interactions with these animals, um, allowing you to cuddle cute little cubs, mm. because we now know that those animals are ending up in this cycle, this vicious cycle of abuse. Um, mm. Secondly, it would be great if people can sign our petition, the Four Paws petition, on our website. Um, we are putting a big ask to the government to include all big cat species in the changes to upcoming changes to legislation. Um, and then to, to make ourselves more aware, to, to also report instances of abuse, I think that's also really important. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, Fiona. We really do appreciate it. Thank you for having us. And there you have it. Make sure to head on over to fourpaws.org.za if you would like to donate or to support any of their wildlife campaigns. Go and sign that petition. And if you know of any animal animals being abused or any illegal activities pertaining to endangered wildlife or any other animals, you are welcome to contact the SPCA. That number is on your screen now. It's 021-700-4140. I think it is up to us as people. It's our responsibility to protect these animals.